The Amazon River, 4,300 miles in length, running through Brazil, Colombia, and Peru. It's the second longest river in the world, between the Nile in Egypt and the Yangtze in China. It's a rich ecosystem supporting life throughout the Amazon rainforest. While many animals call this place home if you're a human being and you're not prepared, this natural wonder of the world can quickly become a watery grave. Sadly, thanks to crime, dangerous wildlife, and unpreparedness, there are many stories of people visiting the Amazon River and never coming back. When you think of scary things in or near the Amazon River, most people think of things like the green anaconda, the largest snake in the world, capable of swallowing pigs, jaguars, or even humans, or the Amazonian bull shark, a huge 11-foot shark that will eat pretty much anything, including human beings and its own species, or the menacing electric eel that can deliver a lethal shock even eight hours after its death or even the bloodthirsty red-bellied piranha, known for being able to swim and pick even large prey completely clean of all flesh. And let's not even get into the nightmares of the giant tarantulas and centipedes. However, the two real threats to western kayakers visiting the Amazon River are the treacherous whitewater rapids of the river itself and the brutal pirates whom roam the rivers. That's right, pirates. But we're talking less spyglasses and cutlasses and more speedboats and AK-47s. Because the Amazon River's human population has experienced a boom in the past few decades and a successful drug trade has unfolded down the river, piracy has sadly flourished. Heavily armed groups of well-organized criminals have been able to commit robbery, rape, and murder along the river with abandon. If you run into those pirates and you follow all their orders and give them your belongings, they may still shoot you just to tie up a loose end. If you don't follow their orders, unless you've got a lot of skill and an inhuman amount of luck on your side, you're pretty much doomed. People have been shot, beaten to death, stabbed, strangled, and dismembered. These pirates aren't in the habit of leaving survivors, as their seafaring predecessors always used to say, dead men tell no tales. That brings us to South African modern-day explorer Davy Duplessis, an inspirational exception to this rule. In this mind-blowing episode of the Infographic Show, we're going to tell you Davy's remarkable story of Amazon survival. It's the story about how a distraught mother, some benevolent locals, Facebook, a beer company, and one truly stubborn man can sometimes deliver a miracle. Even before his 2012 incident in the Amazon, Davy Duplessis had always been an adventurer. The year prior, he'd cycled 9,000 miles down the east coast of Africa, from Cairo in Egypt to Belito in South Africa, over the course of 120 days. Duplessis, a humanitarian at heart, devoted this feat of human endurance to Habitat for Humanity. The sponsorship dues from the project raised enough funds to create a house for an underprivileged family in Tanzania. For most people, this would be enough of a lifetime achievement to take it easy from then on, but in many respects, Davy Duplessis is not most people. He immediately began planning his 2012 mission, Project Amazon. According to Davy's personal website, it was intended to be an unsupported solo mission down the Amazon River, traveling over 6,700 miles over the course of five months. Davy would begin at the river's source, way up in the Peruvian Andes, and would terminate at the river's mouth, Brazil's coastline to the Atlantic Ocean. Davy planned on achieving this route with a combination of paddling, cycling, and hiking. Much like his trip across Africa, Davy's new expedition was all about making a statement. This time, he wanted to promote conservation and environmentally conscious living. He also teamed up with the group Adventurers and Scientists for Conservation, with whom he intended to provide the data he collected along the way. Davy wasn't naive either. He was prepared for many of the potential threats that he could face in the Amazon. When talking about planning for the experience, he said, In Africa, the fears were the big game. The Amazon is a very different environment. The fears came from the small creatures. Davy took extra precautions against poison arrow frogs, bullet ants, and the kanjiru, the Amazon River's infamous and supposedly urethra-invading fish. In theory, he'd accounted for almost everything. He even said that in the river itself, he made a firm commitment to not go any deeper than his knees. This was a project that started out with the purest of intentions. He was self-sufficient, cooking his own meals and purifying rainwater to drink. Davy would paddle for solid blocks of 10 to 12 hours a day, even sleeping in his kayak and allowing the river's current to keep him moving toward his destination. At night, he'd establish base camps on the river's edge and sleep before getting back up and doing it all again the next day. He had a close call two weeks into his journey. While washing a pot on the river's edge in complete jungle darkness, he felt something slither around his leg. He would later find out that this was a baby anaconda and remarked that it was perhaps the first time the snake had ever seen a human being before. As a hardcore animal lover, Davy took it in stride. 
An animal he encountered frequently was the Amazonian freshwater river dolphin. Pods of these dolphins often trailed his kayak during his morning rowing for a couple miles. In August, one of these dolphins even attempted to breach the bottom of his kayak. This, Davy figured, was likely because a young male dolphin during mating season had mistaken his kayak for an eligible bachelorette. He had pleasant encounters with local tribesmen, many of whom had never met people from outside the country, but were genial and welcoming nonetheless. Two months had passed, and it seemed that everything was going according to plan. However, 56 days into Davy's trip, disaster struck. Two men in a dugout motorboat passed his kayak. Davy brushed it off at first, as the boat pulled ahead and disappeared in front of him. After all, plenty of locals worked the river. Davy just carried on rowing. Ten minutes later, Davy felt a sudden, intense impact on his back, a sensation he described as being like a baseball bat slamming into you. He fell from his boat and began to sink. Davy had been shot, and worse, the bullet had struck him in the spine, leaving him partially paralyzed from the waist up. Inside his head, he was screaming at himself, swim, move, but he just kept sinking into the murky depths of the river. When he hit the bottom, he finally regained some movement in his lower body and managed to surface, disoriented and afraid. He looked around seeing nothing but his upturned kayak. As he pushed himself back toward the boat, a second bullet blasted into the left side of Davy's face. He managed to drag himself to the riverbank about 15 feet away and collapsed on the water's edge. But Davy's ordeal was far from over. He felt another impact, this time on the right side of his face. He'd been shot, again, puncturing his carotid artery and spilling copious amounts of blood out into the river below him. It was in this moment that he truly realized how isolated he was here and that the people closest to him did not have his best interests at heart. In this moment of pain and fear, he said to himself, this is it, this is where you die. But against all odds, he was wrong. The motorboat he saw earlier sped toward him, containing only one of the men he'd seen earlier. Davy deduced that the other one had just been shooting him. He rose shakily to his feet and begged the second man for his life. The man, an Amazon pirate, was utterly indifferent. He approached Davy, preparing to finish him off manually. But Davy ran, powered by pure adrenaline, into the jungle. The second unseen pirate fired off a fourth shot and struck Davy in the leg as he fled. But Davy kept running. He ran for a solid couple miles, escaping the two pirates. But suddenly realizing he was injured, without supplies and utterly alone, he collapsed once again, figuring he was doomed. He'd been shot twice in the face, once in the torso and once in the leg. For a couple minutes, he almost accepted it and let himself slip away. Suddenly, he found himself surging with a second burst of power. In this moment, Davy decided that he had two choices, to lay down and die or to get up and live. If he was going to survive this horrible incident, it would be all about choosing to live. He kept going for another mile and a half until he got tremendously lucky. He came upon two tribesmen at the riverbank and managed to get their attention. They quickly attended to him and brought him back to their community for treatment. The tribe began making arrangements to have him transported to a hospital in the city of Pucaipa, Peru. But this hospital was 24 hours away and the tribe didn't have the fuel to get him there. However, they swaddled him with blankets and resolved to take him to the next tribe a few hours downriver. They could help transport him on the next leg of his emergency journey. For a torturous three hours, Davy waited in the bed of the boat, too weak to move, while the two tribes brokered the deal. They needed money to get him to the hospital, but Davy didn't have any, on account of just being robbed by bloodthirsty pirates. Things were getting worse, Davy's organs were beginning to inflate, and he started to vomit blood. His internal bleeding was so bad that he occasionally began to choke on the coagulated blood clots making their way up his throat. At this point, the boatmen of the new tribe realized any payment could wait until later, and they began rushing Davy downriver. The hospital was still 20 hours away. However, these boatmen wouldn't be the last in the massive intercommunal act of collaboration that saved Davy's life. He was dropped off twice more, in the middle of the forest where two more communities came and took him through the next portion of the journey. Davy felt kinda like the baton at a relay race, but given the limited resources of these altruistic communities, it was his best chance of staying alive. It happened twice more before he reached the hospital in Pucapa, where he had to endure another six hours of waiting in limbo while the doctors attempted to identify him. Davy called and spoke to his mother, who immediately took to Facebook, attempting to find a local Spanish speaker who might be able to help save her son's life. And amazingly, it worked. Two men walked into the hospital offering to help Davy after having heard his story from his mother's Facebook posts. Were these men doctors? Government officials? No, they were representatives of South African Breweries, or SAB, a beer company from Davy's home country. They immediately paid off the doctors who gave Davy an x-ray which made them realize they didn't have the capacity to treat wounds this serious. 
he'd need to be flown to a hospital in Lima, Peru's capital. Once again, the SAB men came to the rescue. They booked him a spot on a commercial airline where he was loaded into a stretcher and tied across four streets, traumatizing surrounding commercial passengers. Eventually, he did reach the hospital in Lima and spent a month in the ICU. Davey was told he'd been shot four times with a 22 caliber shotgun and was immensely lucky to be alive. Buckshot had pierced his lungs, skull, windpipe, and heart. The final piece of buckshot remains in his heart to this day, but he made a full recovery. It had taken the combined forces of six whole communities, one terrified mother, two beer company representatives, and doctors in two hospitals to undo the damage two armed men had done in minutes. But the result was successfully saving Davy Duplessis' life in a heartwarming example of how the compassion of many can truly make a difference. The incident hasn't scared Davy away from adventuring. He's performed subsequent missions in Botswana and continues to make a positive impact as an author, activist, and motivational speaker. There are certainly terrifying things hiding in the Amazon jungle, but Davy's story proves that there's great kindness and beauty in there too. Thanks for watching this video from the Infographic Show. If there's anything we love here, it's a story about people triumphing against all odds. Why not check out I Was Trapped Underwater for Three Days? Or if you want more stories from the Amazon, you can check out She Fell 10,000 Feet and Survived 11 Days in the Amazon. On rainforest. Remember, sometimes you really can depend on the kindness of strangers.